Hey everyone, this is Ricky with Spoiler Force Podcast, courtesy of Poplock Podcast. You can find more episodes of Spoiler Force Podcast on Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, YouTube, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Podcast. Spoiler Force Podcast, I choose you! It's an LP. Alright, so this is episode 28 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky, and thank you for tuning in. Um, so, I was actually running late for for this uh, episode because I have my first guest of the month. Um, and before that too, I was like actually watching a bunch of uh, shows that I was catching up on, so I was kind of procrastinating. I was watching uh, South Park... Uh, I was catching up on The Mandalorian. The new episode came out yesterday. Um, I, was, I was also watching uh, My Hero that came out today too. So I was doing a lot of things to keep me not from doing what I should have been doing. So I was also like editing um, episode 27, which is uploaded and edited already. I just have to add some stuff to the description. That should be up before actually this episode. So um, listen to that too if you haven't. And uh, yeah, again, I have a guest today. Uh, he's actually... Um, we've been messaging each other for the past couple of weeks now to set this up. Um, I met, I've met him actually through um, another uh, guest I've had on the show, uh, Andrew, and uh, we actually. How it's funny how we first met because it's it was just through board games, which was pretty cool. Again, my guest here, he's a freelance photographer uh, from the Metro Detroit area. Uh, he's just getting started. He has his own uh, Facebook page as well that you can follow, which he will plug in later in this episode. So let's get to it. I want to introduce my guest. Uh, to a show. Thank you for uh, doing this for me, man. And um, I'm sorry, again, I, I wanted to apologize for running late. I, originally, <laughs> we were supposed to do this an hour ago, and I was running on that moan time. So I was like, I was, I messaged you. I'm like, ah, I'm running late. I got, I got to do something else. And so uh, thank you for being gracious about this too. And just kind of like not, I guess not feeling like you had to be in a rush or in a hurry. No, no, no not at all. I, I'm very grateful for you being here and, and, you know, spreading the word of like all the different like Metro Detroit artists and like photographers and just a lot of people in, in, in the mission area. Yeah. Um, no, the thing is like, uh, I've seen some of your work and then uh, I know, I knew that you're also Andrew's, one of Andrew's friends too. And uh, I, I was looking through some of, I guess some of his, uh, his pictures and stuff like behind the scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that you were, you did some stuff with, uh, with Dao and Shin in them uh, yeah, with yeah. a clean slate. So yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Was that your first time doing that too? No, uh, before I I, I, I did uh, uh, production with them, I, I was doing um, some production for another group called, uh, uh, you know, I can't remember what their name is, but but can I look at it? Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, take your time. But they're from Michigan too? Huh? Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I met them through uh, one of my cousins. She, she, she was the makeup artist for them. Oh, nice. And at that time, I was looking to see how it how a production set was like and, and I wanted to get some experience in, into that before I, I started photography okay yeah. I, I mean I don't know how, how it, it connects together like video vi- videography and pho- photography but I mean I, I in just, a sense where like you're uh, working with the camera regardless yeah um, Andrew kind of did that when he started too he was doing photography on the side and then uh, he got really into videography I think I saw one of your videos that you did when <laughs> you were at the park with the uh, with the roller skates right yeah. you did that one uh-huh. uh, that, no that was pretty cool I'm I'm I have no like idea how to do editing and stuff like that with all that software because I know that with uh, with videography especially it's not just about your camera and your lenses it's about the software you use to create the video yeah and that's what makes it stand out yeah with with photography are you using multiple lenses as well yeah yes I am okay mm-hmm. yeah I, I have three uh, three lenses I have a standard um, a total photo lens and a, f- a 50 uh, millimeter a 50 nifty okay and I usually like to uh, to use that that lens and what, what what's the camera you're using right now i'm using a canon 80d okay so i'm pretty sure that sounds pretty expensive as well <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's pretty expensive it's not a very professional camera but it's in the mid-tier okay yeah there's beginners mid-tier and then the uh professional which is like around 2000 but but mine was was on discount so i had to get it then nice yeah. okay and you use that one for your videos too? Yes, I do. All right, but but I did find uh, find the. Okay, and what's the group? 
The group is called Sketch It Films. Sketch It Films. Yeah, it was their very first uh, production that I that I uh, that I was working for. Okay, and yeah. um, you said they're from Michigan. Like, are they just from Detroit, or is there like a, or are they from like the West Side? Um, uh, I believe they are from Detroit, but I was only working for them for like two, two videos. Okay, so you but did you everywhere though? Did you do like recording for them, or you just took pictures? Uh, no, I was actually just um like the production assistants oh okay yeah. yeah typical PAs yeah uh, I when I was on Clean Slate's um, set for the Fly Boys I've mentioned this on the podcast too but yeah. when I was with them I was actually an extra but seeing how like they were um, just the whole environment itself like the energy mm-hmm. that everyone's walking around with cameras and all the equipment that they're using so like I it was not so much hectic but it's a lot of moving yeah so I yeah. I I think I can only assume that as a PA, like you, you have to keep up with them too. So they're like, yes. "We need you here now," and then you have to be there and you have to keep moving. So <laughs> yes. was it was it kind of hard for you too when you first did it? Yeah, it was hard because they were using terms I I never heard before. <laughs> <laughs> the, because the, I didn't go to school for uh, for filming or anything. Okay, yeah. so you're just doing everything by yourself, yeah, independently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, do you plan to go to school for, or anything like that? Y- yeah, like yeah, Specs Howard. Not or, probably, probably not. Uh, like a technical school like that but I did want to try to get into one or maybe like a semester of classes for for uh, filming and photography okay yeah. yeah that's a good way to start too I mean you want mm-hmm. I mean freelancing and independent work is always good but uh, especially with media like this with media and digital arts yeah. having the, the degree mm-hmm. helps out a lot yeah so like it's it gives you like a good stamp like mm-hmm. you they, they know you're legit you know? <laughs> yeah they, they can trust you <laughs> so yeah, you gotta snip smack that degree right there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what's what's crazy about like the whole digital art school stuff like, i mean mm-hmm. it's not as expensive as like going to school for like i don't know for your oh, like engineering nursing, degree yeah. or nursing mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like a lot of people it's cheap but it's cheaper but then like it's just more about the grind really after you graduate and stuff it's, it's it, everything that you work for it's basically mm-hmm. on you you can't you got to know people you have to network really well market really well so mm-hmm. i think that's that's as i guess as equal as putting paying all those payments for like a higher or like a more expensive degree per oh, se yeah. mm-hmm. so like it's all about the grind really and yeah. um yeah i mean it's good that you worked with someone that's like you know outside of your comfort zone mm-hmm. to get comfortable with like just sets and stuff like that and I'm pretty sure like once you gain more experience it'll be a lot more easier for you and hopefully you get to do like what Andrew did a little bit with the whole like camera work and yeah, with uh-huh. actual shows and stuff so I hope that goes well for you too yeah thanks thanks so besides the whole set stuff um you know I know again you you do things um with freelancing so that that means do you, do you take you take payments from like PayPal and stuff like that from people too that that uh-huh. hire you or how does that work um I don't really just take cash Cash, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like in person. So have you like um, have you done like photo shoots for people already? And yeah, stuff? yes, I have a few, a few. Uh, I did one. My my very first one actually was last year, and that was the first time I I, I actually ever got paid for uh, a shot. But other than that, I've always just tried to build up my uh, portfolio. Okay. But yeah, I, I've always just um, accepted the cash and then. Uh, and then they would allow me to um, post some 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 videos or uh, some photos of of uh, of my shots to my portfolio. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, is it was it more just like family stuff like that, like family um, portraits, or is it like a wedding stuff like that? Yeah, it's more uh, family or uh, senior senior pictures. Senior, okay, mm-hmm. all right, that's good. Um, yeah, usually that's where a lot of that's when it's like busy time for people with yeah. you know, photography mm-hmm. backgrounds and stuff like it's either like weddings or senior pictures or like holidays or yeah. some sort of event mm-hmm. um now do you work with just Hmong people or do you go like with uh i guess with other like uh, white people or yeah, african-americans yeah. Do, you, do you work with everyone yeah, like, yeah yes i work with everyone right you don't yeah. stay ex- yeah, you don't stay exclusive right <laughs> yeah <I'm> like, <laughs> i mean you got to make that money somehow yeah. but like you know you can't you right. know, some some people are like that too. Where they're like, no, I only want to work with one people. Like, <laughs> yeah. That doesn't really get you yeah. far. You uh-huh. gotta expand. <laughs> right? Yeah, you gotta expand. They, uh, you gotta you gotta work with everyone. You can't just stick to one group. It, it's it's hard to just stick with one group. Right. And yeah. has has it been challenging at all yes, since you've been it, doing this? Like it, it has because everyone. It, <laughs> You don't gotta say the names. Don't 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 oh, name no. drop. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I won't name drop, but then I, but but I was I was just gonna say that. 
there's a lot of photographers. Oh, okay. So it's it's it's, it's a, a challenge. Like too. the competition of yeah, that, like uh, where you yeah, gotta. It's very competitive. Now, do you also look at other people's like artwork too? Oh, always. Yeah, yeah. To kind of figure out, like, okay, I gotta. Uh -huh. Do you kind of like I don't want to say steal, but do you get influenced by other yeah, people's style yeah, too? I do. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I I guess that goes for like musicians as well, musicians mm -hmm. and writers. Like you take, you don't, you shouldn't steal, but yeah, you, you steal. Yeah, but you get that inspiration. Yeah, you, know? you take a little bit from everyone and mm -hmm. kind of mold it for your own style. Yeah. I know there's like different styles of photography as well. Do you do more like I guess scenic photos or like do you do just do you like taking pictures with like with actual models there or? Or you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, do you yeah. like doing more like that, or is it how, how does what do you what would you prefer as as your photography style really? So my my photography style, I would say, was landscaping because I I love landscape, photo okay. photography. But um, uh, but now I I would be taking more of models. Uh, and usually, when you do get like requests and stuff, do people just uh. Do they message you or on Facebook or they email you at all? Is that how yeah, it works yes, for you? Yeah, uh, they, okay. they, they Facebook uh, um, message me or, or through email. I mean, have you had difficult clients before though? Like had, when you were taking photos, did they ever give you like, a hard time? Not, not not so much them, but it's always just been me. Okay. Because, uh, because I grew up stuttering. So I, I have stutter issues. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a, no, that's... A speech impediment. Um, so when I, when I want them to stand or pose a certain way, it... it I don't know. It gives me like I have a hard time telling them the the right posture and oh, okay. things like that. Yeah, yeah they're like physically bothers like, me. <laughs> like I need you like like this. You have to physically <laughs> yeah. grab them and pose them. Like all right, stay right there. You yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but before you grab them, you always want to make sure they right. Work. I mean, not like literally grab them, but yeah. I I can see the frustration where like yeah. you know what you want to say and then yeah. like, the words don't come to you mm -hmm. and then and not just that sometimes people don't understand or get it right away, so they're mm -hmm. like, what? I'm confused and then. I, I'm I'm more like on the short short side of patience, so I'm I would physically be like I wouldn't get in their face, but I'd be like, oh my god, stand <laughs> yeah. here, like do the, do this, uh -huh. like act more natural. Like, I would flip out easy, uh, easily. So I, I understand, like I mean, especially with photography, you want because as an artist, you want that I guess the image is in, that's in your mind, so you yeah, want to yeah, right. see the shot exactly how you pictured it too, and um and I, that goes for like with a lot of film directors too. Like one of the guys that I had on my podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. Josh Tauby, he's uh, with Blue View Cinema. He mentioned that you know sometimes when you, when you get your shot, you know what you want. You want to like with the camera work, especially as well. Like, you want to just do it right then and there before you lose it. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I can understand like the whole frustrating part where they're not working well with you. But uh, I mean, it doesn't sound like since you mentioned like you don't really have a hard time with them. So mm -hmm. um, not yet. Not is. yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean, do you also like? Um, what was I gonna say? Do, do you besides working with like um, clients as well? Do you get like uh, do you set up appointments with them too? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's not just like uh, like the next day kind of thing, right? Is that oh, like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I always make it so that I I mean like how you were doing it with me to uh, coming here to make me comfortable. Yeah, that that that's how I want my clients to be to okay be comfortable with their own setting, their own time. Okay, yeah, their own places. Now, do you, um, I guess, for for that as well? What do you, do, you, do you have like a standard rate? I guess because I know that there's a lot of artists who mm -hmm. um, pref have like preferred rates or yeah. do some sort of marketing specials or whatnot. Do you have that as well for you? I I do, but I'm very flexible. Okay. Yeah. My my current rate right now is uh, seventy five an hour. Okay. And that's like for beginners, but um, if anything, then I I prefer it to be at least like two hundred for a session for a full day and usually that's like what eight hours or uh you no know, i mean it's just whenever they they, they want to stop oh okay day, yeah so it could go on for literally the entire yeah. day mm -hmm. yeah. okay yeah yeah because okay. that, that gives that. me experience yeah okay and, and and i enjoy that and um so for your portfolio do you do you post that on facebook as well or do you have i know you have your own facebook page mm -hmm. uh 2hx studios yes now is that your portfolio on that page yeah, yeah, on my Facebook. Yeah, that's my portfolio. Okay. But I, I also have a um a a Shutterstock, um, uh, a Shutterstock account, um, and an Instagram account. But I, I, I don't think you would consider those portfolios, do you? Um, well, Insta. I don't. I didn't heard, know about was it Shutterstock. I, yeah. I, I never heard of that one before. Mm -hmm. But Instagram technically is a portfolio or portfolio mm -hmm. of 
photos because that's what everyone does. <laughs> Just you know, taking photos of food and uh-huh. stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, do you, do you do that with your camera too? Like with your nice one, you just take photos of your food, like on <laughs> <like> Instagram. <laughs> I do that sometimes when it's like ramen or something. <laughs> oh, okay, make it look make it look really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That uh, yeah. Um, I mean, do you? I I know you want to advance with your with your actual hardware too. Yeah. Is there like a camera you have in mind that you are aiming to get? Mm-hmm. Not at the moment. Uh, I, I'm very content with my camera. Okay. Yeah, but and your was it your Canon? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's a Canon. Uh, does it record with like 4K too? With that? It's it's not uh it's not compatible with 4K. You should be getting that soon though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, 4K stuff's getting cheaper because I think what uh, the the next one like, yeah. is it 5K something like that. It's uh slowly coming out. I know mm-hmm. with a lot of the 4K TVs, they're actually dropping down in prices now because of the next. The yeah. next thing, uh-huh. so it's. I'm pretty sure that's the same thing with cameras too. You know, mm-hmm. um, I mean, do you have like, uh, do you use like microphones and stuff too for your camera setup when you do videos? Oh, yes, yes, and yes, boom mics and all that stuff. Yes, I have a, a shotgun um, roll mic. Okay. For, for my camera, when when I do record. Um, do you do you use like the tripod or not the tripod but like the. I guess like some sort of stabilizer. Do you use that for your camera too? Uh, that, I, that way it doesn't look like it's like moving, <laughs> you know. Uh, yes, I use the tripod for my camera, but uh, uh, my mic, I don't have one of the um, like the external oh, okay. uh, recorders yet. So is that something you're gonna get next then? Yes. yes okay. Uh-huh. So right now the microphone you use for your camera is just the built-in one. No, it's my 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 road mic. Oh, your road uh, mic. Yeah, okay. yeah, that I connect externally to my camera. But you're looking to get like a like a bigger external mic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. Uh-huh. And then one of the sound recorders that. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Now, do you use like uh, what is it? Those GoPros at all? Do you like do you mix up stuff like that too? All right, guys. Uh, sorry about that uh, mishap there. Uh, if if you guys don't know by now, I actually record my podcast through my phone, my smartphone. Um, I had a interruption. Someone tried to call me, so I do apologize about that. I. What, what did we leave off of? Uh, to what we talked about your boom mic, yeah, right? Boom that's what we yes. were talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now for your... Oh, yeah, that's right. First person recording. That's what we were talking mm-hmm. about, like, with your phone and stuff. Yeah. Um, have you tried doing, like, any... I guess, like, how those those YouTube those YouTubers do, like, those, like, adventure first person videos? Have you seen, like, those guys do, like, those parkour style yeah. stuff? Have you, have you played with any I was video? just about to bring that up with okay. parkour, yeah. That, that's what I've always wanted to do was a parkour. Uh, video, but <laughs> I think I, I I do need a GoPro for that. Or yeah, like at least uh one of those harnesses where you connect it to your like headset, uh, your cap or something. Yeah, um, I had a buddy that had a GoPro. I had, mm-hmm. I used the um the body strap. I was doing it for my boxing video like oh. way back. Yeah. Um, what sucked was like you see the bag moving, but you don't really see my my gloves <laughs> hitting the bag. So it really it just looks like it's just you're shaking. The camera's just shaking. And I was yeah. like, what the hell? It makes no sense. <laughs> No, but um, yeah, I mean, first person cameras, like that kind of style of recording is very mm-hmm. unique too because it gives you that video game essence, you know. Yeah. And, um, I don't know if you've seen, like, there's so many GoPro ones with the parkour, but like, mm-hmm. there's there's one where the guy's like standing on top of the ledge, walking on like the end of the building. Yeah. And then he looks over and you see like, uh, you know, the, pretty much the whole city scene where there are all the cars and stuff like it's freaking wild how they do that man <laughs> and like how i guess people go to like those construction zones and it's not like a finished building but uh, they're sitting on like those i guess you could say like, those balconies you know yeah and like they're like leaning over i'm like what the hell man like you guys are freaking wild <laughs> don't go to, I, I wouldn't recommend that you do something like that unless you want to do that uh-huh. yeah. that's seems, that seems pretty frightening uh i mean have you i, I know that you worked with a little bit of videography as well mm-hmm. right now are you kind of just playing with that right now or is that something that you plan to kind of venture into with I guess with your photography as well yeah it's something that I've always wanted to do was to venture into that okay. um, I have like at least 200 videos on my YouTube channel okay but it's all like a mix around I have some videos of me playing the piano some videos of me just messing around like da- break dancing and then uh my, my my most recent videos that that I post on on, on YouTube is just like music videos I, I I guess you could say like um like instruments uh instrumental videos and then it's just um, me exploring Michigan 
Okay. And it's just like kind of like vlog styled videos. I, I won't say it's vlogs, but uh, it's just like scenery videos. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, do you plan to? Do you, would you like to do that though? Like with actual music videos with other like I guess musicians and stuff. Would yeah, you want to yeah. do that? Yeah, I would. I would enjoy that. Yeah, because I know there's like uh, people. A lot of people kind of like, especially in the Hmong community now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of these new young artists. You know, they're always yeah. looking for some sort of. Uh, videographer or mm-hmm. some sort of camera guy to work with so yeah. I guess that's a good market for you to kind of if you're still pursuing videography that's a good way to a good I guess a good way to start to from the ground up yeah. with that um, you mentioned that you break dance like <laughs> is that something you've always been doing I never knew this <laughs> I, I used to I, I don't break dance anymore <laughs> I'm old <laughs> okay like were you like really into it like you could do like all the flips and shit like I, I used to be able to do flips, but uh, but now I, I, I don't think I can. <laughs> nah. Growing up for me, like physically, I could not do it. And mm-hmm. I always, I've always found it like pretty amazing to see like how these athletes can kind of like um, just just physically lift themselves yeah. from the ground, you know, mm-hmm. and hold their positions and kind of just maintain that pose or that form. So, yeah. I mean, just talking about breakdancing makes it feel so old too because like <laughs> that's something like every Hmong and Asian <laughs> yeah. person used to do like it's, uh-huh. if, if it wasn't like gang gangster rap then you were breakdancing you yeah. know? it was one or the other or like you were like an artist or something like it, I, I always picture like you know how people we used to wear those Jinko jeans and like the beanies and the big <laughs> yeah. baggy t-shirts breakdancing that's how uh-huh. I that's, when I hear breakdancing that's what I yeah. hear picture that uh-huh. you know the, the super <laughs> old school yeah with the cardboard box on the outside yeah. and people like dancing to all like the the trance music and, yeah. and like, uh-huh. doing the rave shit too like man that's it's so old school uh-huh. to kind of just think back to that and yeah. were you dancing long at all or was it just like a i guess like a short period of time yeah, or? It was just a short period of time it was just a, because my my uh my buddies were doing it oh okay that's that you guys had like a group yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever battle anyone? Uh, so when I I used to go to Wayne State University, um, and a few of my 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 buddies there, we we would go to they had this underground area in the lunchroom. We would go down there to, to do some break dance battles there. Nice. Did you, did you <laughs> ever like? Was it like a group effort or was it like solo? <laughs> it's always been just like a, a solo thing. But then, you, you, you did know, you win? Own... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> I mean, the kind of break dancing, break dancing style that you did was it more like I guess like the whole street style, right? It, yeah, it wasn't style. like it wasn't like how today's stuff is like where they have interpretive dancing and. I guess like a lot more footwork and different styles blending into with street style dancing. So like, what was just, what was the best trick you could do? Was it the the air flare? Can you do that? Uh, no, I I couldn't do that, but I could do the uh, the windmill. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. yeah, I did like a six step, and then I would transition into a windmill. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like um, like like I said with footwork, man. I'm I'm so clumsy, so I can't do that. And that's what that's like what people like. People don't really like notice that too too much because they're so caught up with like the big tricks. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I used to always love seeing people transition into it, where, where they would do the steps and then like how they would kind of break down and then bam, they do the yep. trick. Yeah. Uh-huh. So like I I like the build the up a lot more. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah, that was that's what it is. That's what kind of drew me into the art form because like it's mm-hmm. it's how they got into all like the the big uh, the big movements because uh-huh. it wasn't like how if it wasn't for the good setup and the good build up from that you can't do anything big besides this like, what like a really big backflip or something <laughs> yeah you know so um was that your go-to move though the windmill was that like your big finisher yeah, i guess yeah. when you would battle oh yeah <laughs> but that was it <laughs> like that's one move yeah. that's it i'm, I'm good <laughs> yeah man i mean like back then they used to say uh, there was there was probably only two ways to get a girl was to know how to break dance and play volleyball <laughs> <laughs> were you playing volleyball too with yeah, a lot yeah. of the cats yeah my, my, my uncle shown i'm not sure if you remember him but he was uh he was pretty well known in, in the Michigan area, um, and and I used to to, to play uh, volleyball, for, not not for his team, but then just with him, like when he used to play at uh, Campbell. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. Yeah, like all those practice, yeah. like the other teams practice there and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so you're not? Are you still doing any sports at all then? No. You kind of just yeah. you chilled out. And you're like, yeah. I'm good. I don't want to get hurt no more. <laughs> yeah. The last sport I did was taekwondo. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I did that for uh, two months and then I had to stop because of uh, schooling and just working full time. I, I just couldn't do it because 
the Taekwondo classes that, that I was taking was from 4 to 8 o'clock at night and it, it just wasn't balancing with school and work yeah um, I did I did Taekwondo when I was like a little oh, really? Kid. yeah I did I was like I was like 6 years old um, I remember because my parents took me there it was a uh, United Taekwondo on 13 next to uh, that pool hall you know on 13 mm-hmm. mile on mound Oh yeah, yeah. In that yeah. plaza, uh-huh. I went there, but they're not that whole federations. They're not there no more. They, mm-hmm. they, I don't know what happened to them, but I used to go there as a kid. I went there from like since from first grade to I think like fourth grade, and mm-hmm. I was getting pretty good. I was like, I was close to being a blue belt in taekwondo. Yeah, but because of uh, other students and pressure, I was like, everyone was leaving. I'm like, damn. I I knew my ma- I knew like my master didn't want me to leave. Yeah, because he he was like. You know, I was one of the very few that stuck with them because mm-hmm. uh, they were a very small school, yeah. or at least the the group I was in was a small group. Mm-hmm. So I was one of the few that first started, and he got, he kind of just saw me build up, and so he didn't want me to leave. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, but everyone's leaving. You know, I don't really want to stay anywhere. <laughs> so I, I left, and when I think back at it now, I kind of regret it because uh-huh. if if I had stayed, yeah, I, I don't know how good I would have been, but I would have loved to compete. Yeah, and I, I think that's like I think that's one of the reasons why I had like so much pent up aggression as a kid because mm-hmm. I stopped exerting that you oh, know yeah. all that energy yeah. out. So mm-hmm. I had all this pent up aggression, and so um, I kind of just I mean I forgot a lot of the techniques. Like the only thing is I really remember was just the basic front kick. Yeah. So um, <laughs> other than that, yeah, I I did I don't remember how well I used to, to do, but I, if anything, I remember. I, lo- I used to love practicing the katas. Did you ever do that? Like mm-hmm. the techniques and the forms and stuff? It's kind of like we, a dance a little bit. Yeah, 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 we learned the kicks and the um, uh, the uh, the stretches and everything. But, yeah. But it was never about the form, though. Oh, okay. From, from, I mean, from the two months that I went. Okay, because like when, when I used to do it, they used to make us practice uh, the kicks in the mm-hmm. class, but they would really stress to us, like, practice the katas and, like, all the... I guess I never really thought much of it with as a kid with with all the with, you know with the traditional katas and stuff like and for those who who's listening if you don't know what katas are katas are like a a formation of it's a sequence of movements in with, the, with that involves all your techniques karate uses it a lot um, I'm pretty sure aikido and judo they have some sort of form so in taekwondo for I don't know if they in taekwondo if they call it katas but it's like that so i would i remember yeah. like i used to do it every day to where like i could do it effortlessly without even thinking of it thinking of it and like it, it used to be like what was cool too when i think about it now they teach you like a certain sequence as a white belt and then as you build up you you build up your kata yeah. so it's like the same form from white belt all the way to like black belt uh-huh. and it's like like i think it, it, it could get to like being almost a 10 minute sequence that's how long it is from white belt to black belt. Talking about it all makes me think about it. Like, I really regret like leaving. <laughs> but I remember when I was sparring in Taekwondo and like, like how you mentioned, I had like this pent up aggression. So, um, I don't know. Did you ever get to spar in class? No, no, no. I, I, I've watched them spar, but I wasn't allowed to. Okay. Yeah. yeah I was, I think I was like a, a yellow belt. My class was like a, the moment you you know when you get your first belt after the white belt then you can start like sparring it goes from like three kick sparring so three kick sparring is pretty much like you would do three kicks your your partner would do three kicks and you just go back and forth and then you hit like green belt then you can do um i guess they could call they call it light non-contact sparring Mm -hmm. so i remember this one kid uh his name was joe he's like little italian kid him and his dad were in the (laughs) class together and uh, because me and joe were like the same size um we would always partner up and he um what he would do was like he i remember i remember this perfectly like he he would always come aggressive and because it was no contact he would make it seem like he was gonna hit me yeah so there was one time where he threw the kick and he punched me and i was like whoa in taekwondo there's no punches man like you're not supposed to do that so when it was so i was waiting for him to come back at me again he he faked the punch, so I literally punched him in the face. And then my, my teacher's like, hey, there's no punch in the class. I'm like, well, he, he was throwing hands at me first, man, and I hit him. So it was pretty funny. I remember that. I made him cry because I, I was like, what the hell, man? Like, there's no contact. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you, I guess with martial arts, since we're on this topic with martial arts, was were you ever trying to, I guess, besides Taekwondo, did you have any interest in, like, other traditional arts at all? Or did or are you more like the whole 
how I am with MMA now with the more modern, <laughs> modernized martial art where everyone's doing the grappling and jujitsu and the Muay Thai. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to learn karate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did, did you know like? Do you know what forms of karate There's, or style of karate? I guess. I I I didn't know there was uh, forms for karate. I I I've always uh, just thought karate was <laughs> karate. I'm gonna sound like really nerdy now. Now that I'm like on this topic of martial arts, mm -hmm. so like uh, there's there's a lot of different styles of karate. Like um, more the most common one is uh shotokan mm -hmm. or uh kyokushin karate shotokan is like um i don't know if you know who this ufc fighter is. shotokan's a, like leota machida does this does the style um in the actual handbook of street fighter like the first the very first street fighter mm -hmm. they kind of I, I don't i don't remember if it was confirmed but they were like reused fighting style with shotokan karate mm -hmm. but then throughout the rest of the story and the comics and stuff they kind of changed it up <laughs> but like in the game it was called shotokan karate and then kyokushin was found by uh, Ma Soyama. I believe he was a Korean guy, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, for those who are listening, don't quote me on this. I don't know if he was Korean. Based on the film I saw, Fighter of the Wind, have you watched that? It was like 2005, 2006 film. It's based on Ma Soyama. He's like one of the first karate guys to actually implement like weight training and strength training to his uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. um, like the the film they kind of like made it more Hollywood. I, I don't think he went to that extent of like training in the mountains and being isolated like that. <laughs> but um, he was pretty powerful. If you look on YouTube, he has like uh, he's most popular. Like his one of his most popular videos is him striking like an ox on the head, mm -hmm. and he actually broke the ox's head. Yeah. But, like just like with an actual like hand strike, and uh, yeah, like Kyokushin's more like in putting in gaming terms. Um, you know that game technique? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Kazuya yeah. and, and Heihachi, they have Kyokushin yeah, style karate. Okay. That's All what right. it is. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it's it's more like kickboxing, and then Shotokan's more like the like fencing, I guess. It's more defensive. Uh -huh. um, there's so many branches of karate. Yeah. I only stuck with Shotokan and Kyokushin because those are the most common ones. Uh -huh. Everything else that you see on YouTube is it's either that it's either legit or it's those really like messed up guys where they do like the air flails and stuff. Yeah, have you yeah. seen that video where yeah, those guys were like the fat guys were like doing like the Wing Chun style? Yeah, and they're hitting like the ball and like jumping off the walls and stuff. Yeah, or like that Russian guy, he created his own uh, fighting style. Yeah, yeah he's, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like doing poses and stuff. Like yeah. this is like the crackhead crane style, man. Like it's yeah. like what the hell? Like people get so into like the martial arts and stuff yeah. that they have to create their own art. <laughs> yeah, I think that's called Kung Fu's or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Kung Fu's or like um, uh, martial arts for dummies and stuff. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the, the Facebook stuff is super funny. It's uh, you just like it's always white people though. Like it's, 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 it's always white people. Like, uh, it's always like these old white dudes that that, that create their own form uh -huh. and stuff. Like um, do you, you ever seen those ones where like they they do the uh. Like the key blast, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like uh, there was like one I saw where like the I forgot I forgot who it was, but he had like his technique was like he can give key to you and you can exert that key. So he uh -huh. gave the he gave his key to like a a, a female student, uh -huh. and so she taps him in the head and he like collapses. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what kind of BS is this? And then um, did you ever see the one with like the this one like the one I'm talking about here is like the really popular one with mm -hmm. like um the key master versus the mma guy and oh he, yeah, yeah yeah he's like that I, old dude who's like 100 and 0 or something yeah, like that. yeah yeah uh -huh. he was like flipping people over without <laughs> touching them yeah and then he does it to the mma guy he hits them in the face <laughs> yeah. and they stop it i'm like wow man <laughs> yeah those i don't know man, like to, to have people think like that with, with their like to create their own form you know mm -hmm. like it's oh, i don't know yeah <laughs> it better work <laughs> you know <laughs> you ever see the ones where like the guys have like the i guess they try to do like krav maga and like the, this one dude was like this really heavy set guy was uh -huh. like i i can teach you how to block a knife and like he's like stabbing with that so the guy comes at him with the with the fake knife and he yeah. like he takes the hit and then he just moves his body <laughs> like that's some bs man like if, if that was a real knife Touching you, you be dead. You get you get stabbed on the spot. What yeah. the hell? You can't just shift your body and move the movement. Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. Th those ones, th those guys, those guys crack me up. It, it's a good laugh. Yeah, it, yeah. And have you seen the guy, um, the MMA fighter in uh, China? He he he, uh, he was trying to prove that uh, that Wing Chun and uh, like Tai Chi and, and all of that other stuff is just for like med meditation and not actually for fighting. So he challenged a um, a Wing Chun uh, user 
And he was beating that guy up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, the MMA guy was beating him up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's always there's always like that where they... Uh, I know like Wing Chun's huge because of Donnie Yen. Mm-hmm. You've seen the It Man yeah, 4 trailer? Of, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, Donnie Yen's done a great job, um, I guess, uh, marketing uh, Wing Chun. I mean, yeah. Wing Chun's a beautiful art too, but mm-hmm. it's... People don't understand like... Like you, you're, it's only that effective if you are that good. Like if you've had forty plus years yeah. of Wing Chun mm-hmm. and you understand like the the motions and stuff. This uh, martial arts place was on Nine and Grashit, and um, it's a uh, he was a uh, he was he was a, a black teacher. He said that he had like he had experience with some of Bruce Lee's students. Oh. Um, the way how he talked, he he seemed legit. Yeah, and uh, he would like talk about Wing Chun and stuff like that and. For me, I feel like traditional kung fu. It's good for your reflexes. It's it, it's good to, um, I guess, maintain like the same movements and some sort of. It, it's kind of like the best way I can put it is like it's kind of like ultra instinct, mm-hmm. where you're practicing how to move before you actually get hit. I mean that that kind of sensitivity is real. Like mm-hmm. real sensitive training where uh, traditional martial arts have is like where you can kind of feel your opponent already and. It sounds crazy, but it, it is true. Like mm-hmm. um, that's why Bruce Lee was so good yeah. with his with his Wing Chun. But like mm-hmm. on on to It Man Four, I mean that's what that's what makes it looks good. But then you can't have someone who's been training six months of Wing Chun go to a gym <laughs> yeah. and try to fight these guys. Like it does no, it doesn't work. Like because it's so stationary. You know, people yeah, have yeah. like uh, the traditional Wing Chun style is very closed in, and mm-hmm. their their hands are out. Yeah. And instead of like throwing like an actual cross like a boxer, mm-hmm. they kind of just. They they throw their punches from like from where their stance is, mm-hmm. so it, it's like from your elbows and you just kind of yeah it's so like a fast no, strike yeah uh-huh. like there's no like there's no motion of mm-hmm. you or of you like torquing torquing your hips or like moving your shoulders or like you know bo- like a boxing cross like throwing a left hook like you kind of feel the motion of you got to step rotate mm-hmm. your hips and move your shoulders and it's all one motion yeah. but Wing Chun is very very fast it's just mm-hmm. multiple hits at once and so like. It looks flashy, but I mean the speed is there. But yeah. I don't, I don't think you could kind of take that to like, especially an MMA, MMA gym where you're learning everything at once. Yeah. You can't just go and try to do Wing Chun to them. <laughs> and um, yeah, there, I think there was one where like those Shaolin monks too. Those, have you seen those? I, yeah. It, what, was it the documentary? Or um... I think so. The one that let's see the the Shaolin monk I'm talking about. He was he's a he went to K1. He actually uh-huh. uh, kickboxed at Bokao. You know who that is? Bokao. Bokao, the Thai fighter? Mm, I don't think... No, oh, yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he, he was actually one of the very first uh, young fighters to win the Grand Prix of K1. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's actually... He's been fighting for quite a while now, but like the, this monk dude, he's like trying to break the trend that like, like Chinese Kung Fu can, can go into that, those kind of sports too. I mean, he's pretty mm-hmm. legit, yeah. and he's pretty tough, but... It's just kind of ridiculous to see like some monk in the the ring trying to kickbox, trying to kickbox with all these kick these kickboxers. Yeah. It's, it's it's I guess he's trying to like break the walls down. But, uh-huh. I mean, like if for those of you who are listening and who are traditional martial artists uh, fanatics, I'm not like bashing on the art. I I personally feel like um, the traditional arts they're not as effective <laughs> as they as they were meant to be. I mean. Because there's, or at least for sports, if you're trying to do that and put it into sports, no, it doesn't work. But like if it's like a life or death thing where you gotta grab someone's throat and like pull their eyes out or punch someone's balls, like okay, that yeah. makes that makes sense. Yeah. You've seen all the Ip Man films, right? Yeah, all yeah. three of them. Yep. Yeah. What, what do you think of this new one? And uh, the guy that he's fighting is actually a um, pretty legit fighter too. He played that Yuri Boyka in uh, what's what's his franchise called? Like. Some sort of underground battle. I, I just know the character, mm-hmm. um, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. he's like some some um, some European actor. Yeah, he uh, he. That's funny. He auditioned for uh, uh, Scott Smith. I think it's his name, Scott Smith or Sam. Not Sam Smith. I, on, let me look that up. It's bugging me now. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I was just really excited uh, to see Bruce Lee in there. Yeah, <laughs> they're showing that they're actually using like the actual tapes uh-huh. of him, like the one inch punch and, uh, and him uh, showcasing Jeet Kune Do. Mm-hmm. Scott Atkins, that's you know who that is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Scott Atkins. Okay, he was in the um, Undisputed. That's what I, I was like. What was I thinking? Like <laughs> Underground, it's Undisputed. Yeah, but, I mean, um, 
he's actually an okay actor. He just doesn't have, like, the... He's a good action star, but he doesn't have the whole, like, persona down. He's kind of, like, just... Like, if you know if you know he's in the film, you know he's just going to be the big badass in the film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think that's pretty cool that they have him fighting Donnie Yen next in It Man 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you seen the prequels at all with It Man? Like, the one where um, he... Where, I forgot what it was, but it was, like... It was before part three. They released one where it was, like, the beginning of how he learned Wing Chun. It was with a different actor, right? Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah then I've seen it, yeah. I wasn't too impressed with that one. I felt like that was a little bit too Hollywood too, because like the old guy he was fighting was like just too too good. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that that'll really be real. Yeah. Uh, did Did you like um, Did you like the other? Was it? It's a spinoff one, Master Z. Did you watch that one too? No, I think that one's on Netflix. Was that the one? The one with um, uh, Batista, right? Oh, was he it was, Batista. He, yeah, because the, the the guy Master Z was the guy that It Man fought in Part Three. Mm-hmm. The, the, they were like trying to compete, like whose Wing Chun is better. Master Z is the, that the other opponent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then, yeah. So it is that one. Yeah. Then he fought Batista in his mm-hmm. movie. Um, I I didn't I didn't really watch. I only watched that final fight. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought that was I, I liked I liked how they showcased his Wing Chun style. It was more aggressive. Yeah, than how more, Donnie yeah. Yen's was mm-hmm. Donnie Yen's was more like more uh defensive but yeah. i mean you can't top that first film man like where he fought the 10 karate dudes yeah man that's such an iconic scene people still like watch it to this day it's yep. it's so iconic because like it's like the way how he was moving in that film it looked like the sound effects couldn't keep up with him like imagine being the sound guy you know it's like kind of while he's watching like putting the sound edits in it's like i can't do it it's too fast <laughs> yeah so that scene was epic yeah it's uh it's something that he, I guess that's what really like trended Wing Chun too. Yeah. And yeah, but I feel like it wasn't just his team, but like before, like why why he had to right to how it, how he got to yeah. that scene, mm-hmm. like seeing his his one of his friends get shot in the head like that. Yeah. Because we were talking about karate earlier. Mm-hmm. The karate guys and that's uh, Shotokan karate. Oh, okay. All that, right. that style of karate that they fought with Danny, that's Shotokan. Yeah. Um, okay. If if I'm wrong, then you can. The listeners can email me and tell me what it is. But as far as I know, that was Shotokan because that was not Kyokushin. So Kyokushin karate focuses more on leg kicks, but they don't do like tie kicks where like it's off from the hip. They actually like thrust with their knees. So like they kind of, you know how like you take one, like you, you do like the front kick and then you raise your leg and then kick. Uh-huh. That's what Shotokan, Shotokan does with their roundhouse kicks. Uh-huh. They don't, they don't like actually do the tie style where you yeah. carry your whole leg and just wham, like wail on their legs. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah it's the techniques and stuff is always different I feel like um, that's why I feel like MMA is like the best way to go because MMA is teaching you techniques yeah, from, like from everything yeah, yep. uh-huh. yeah, it's more it's more real life I mean yeah. uh, if any art um, if anyone's trying to pursue martial arts I think wrestling or not 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 the WWE wrestling right, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like tr- uh, real Roman Greco or uh, collegiate wrestling style that's a good way that's a good way to start in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu those are the two arts that's the best way to start yeah uh, because I I feel like anyone can strike really if you mm-hmm. um, it's the ground game that no one is prepared for yeah and like most fights end up on the floor yeah, right. <laughs> like, like if you're really gonna scrap with someone you're, you're bound to be on the floor yeah <laughs> that's like like you ever watch those those scrap videos where like they they stand them back up like like what the hell are you doing man this, this is not a boxing match it's a real fight let them let them go at it have you ever had yeah, an, have you ever had any confrontation though like where you I guess I guess you could say like more I guess sparred in a more heavy way or actually had to scrap with someone have you ever like, I've never actually had to fight someone but I almost had to really yeah it was it was back when I used to play soccer and it was like when I was in. 12th grade maybe and I was with a uh, w- with a a soccer league but we're, we're all like Hmong, you know oh so it's like it's kind of like the Y kind of like that yeah kind of and then we and then we went to go play with uh, this um, uh, I think they're like Iranian or something they're, they're like a oh like Middle Eastern yeah Middle Eastern team okay yeah and it was just me alone walking to to these bleachers because our field was on the opposite side of these, these bleachers. Right. And I, I was walking along the bleachers because it was like after a game and I was just drinking water. And two of their teammates came up to me and 
and they were saying something and one of the teammates came up and grabbed my arm <laughs> oh like, shit what, what, what are you doing <laughs> so the other kid was gonna like come he, he was like getting ready to punch me but then I I, I like flailed the guy off and I and I ran back to my team and I was like the closest closest encounter I had to almost get into a fight damn yeah. I, I, I wonder what they they are probably trying to start some shit yeah I think that's yeah. what it was but you know I just I just I just ran I didn't want to get into a fight well, yeah, I mean, the thing, if you think about the environment, like you're on bleachers uh-huh. and you're fighting more than one guy. Yeah. It's something that, I mean, if you couldn't avoid it, then yeah, uh-huh. but if you could, since you had the opportunity to avoid it, you should. Uh-huh. And for anyone who's listening, do not fight just to fight. <laughs> That's the worst way to go. I mean, anyone who's looking for a fight is going to get knocked out. You only yeah. fight when you have to fight. For those of you who are martial arts fanatics, if you have to, I guess, some sort of expression to kind of, if you want to fight or learn how to fight, go to a gym or to a school yeah. an actual school it was bar yeah, yeah. Don't, don't take it out on the streets because that's an assault charge <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's jail time <laughs> it, it's not a joke man like that's why like when people do like the whole backyard stuff I understand like that's how a lot of fighters get started too with the backyard fights but, and I, I did that too I'm guilty of that mm-hmm. I used to have my friends over we used to do like Kimbo Slice style fights where we would set up matches and, and think that we were you know we would think that we were like the shit, you know, like we about to go in there and wreck some people up. And uh, I've had my fair share of like, like a few wins and a few losses. I, 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 I lost to a lot of wrestlers, which is why I highly recommend that you wrestle and do, do jujitsu because you can dictate the fight with, with that style. Yeah. Even if, even if you're not a good boxer, like if you know how to wrestle and you take them to the floor mm-hmm. and you're, you're, just, you're on top, you yeah. can just hit them. And so, um, yeah, it's those like submission moves. You, you just like kind of just hold them, and yeah. you can kind of you can manipulate their body joints and stuff. Mm-hmm. No, but like all this aggression with these topics, you know. I want to yeah. get back to your photography <laughs> <laughs> because it, we're, we're off topic a little bit. It was no, interesting. Like, it's a great, ta- it's a it's a great tangent. You know, yeah, I, 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 I that, that's what podcasting is all about, man. Yeah. It's 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 whatever it has to be tangents or <laughs> yep. or the top main, the actual main focus but look, I find it funny though like how mm-hmm. me and you how we both have like some sort of martial art background yeah. and we just kind of yeah we're not doing this no more we're just gonna settle down and do digital media arts <laughs> yeah. but, but, but I do have a, a question for you uh, Ricky can you still do the, the, the kicks? Mm-mm. no I cannot <laughs> kick no more I could throw some heavy leg kicks but uh-huh. Maybe a nice body kick, but uh-huh. it'll look very goofy. I would look like those guys on YouTube or Facebook. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't want to sound like I'm cocky or anything either, because like that's the thing that I learned a lot from doing martial arts was be actually being humble, you know. And yeah. um, the ones who I mean, it sounds cliche, but the ones who who don't brag about their art mm-hmm. are the ones who are the most deadliest. Yeah. That's that's how I see it. Mm-hmm. The guy, the guys that are always looking for a fight, like I said, they they'll, they get knocked out. And that's why, like, I don't like seeing WWE antics because I know that it gets on Andrew's nerves. But, <laughs> yeah. but the, the guys who have that kind of persona where they have to do, like, the mic skills and display of, I guess, being macho and stuff, like, mm-hmm. that kind of plays into the whole, you know, like, arrogance of martial arts, which is why MMA is kind of, like, falling apart a little bit, too, where these guys are talented. They're great fighters, but now they're doing the antics and all the acting, and mm-hmm. it gets... It, you lose the traditional side of the art it was never about being the bigger man it was about learning how to defend yourself yeah so uh yeah being humble r- with martial arts taught me a lot uh, growing up and even now like i don't practice it as much but i still hit the bag from time to time uh i right now now that i'm like really out of shape and i can't kick anymore so i focus a lot on boxing uh-huh. Uh, I can only do like maybe two or three rounds in the back and I'm, I call it quits. I'm like, yeah, I can't do it no more. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but like, uh, yeah, I, I cannot kick. Like I said, I could do like basic front kicks. My roundhouse kick form is so ugly because like my hips are not like how it used to be. I'm so stiff now. Like, it, it's bad. Yeah. And then uh, that's why like I kind of like stopped critiquing martial arts because I realized like I can't critique these guys because I'm in I'm not on their level as in like, physically I'm not in shape. Yeah. So it's like me trying to teach you how to fight when I can't fight. It's, <laughs> it just sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, the, it's uh, it was more therapeutic when yeah. I was younger, yeah. phys- being physically aggressive. But now um, with podcasting, mm-hmm. it, this is my new therapy. This is this is my martial art, my boxing. Now. Great. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's how I kind of see how like with your photography, yeah, that's kind of like your outlet now too. Mm-hmm. With 
how you want to express your art again with, with the topics of with photography you know I, I hope that it goes well for you I mean are you practicing like editing too I know that's a huge thing yeah, besides, yeah. besides taking a good photo if you don't know how to edit then it still looks like trash <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> unless you have like really good lighting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But but even so, if you have like good lighting, you still want to bring it to the the, the editing tables. Yeah. Around with it. Have you um messed with like film at all, like actual film scripts? Have oh you, no, have I you done or like printing, like anything like that. Um, only during high school. I I, I had a class in filming, but <laughs> that that was the last time I touched film. Yeah, I I I did that um in high school too. I mm-hmm. it was it was a like a, it was more like Photoshop class, mm-hmm. but our teacher wanted us to uh she taught us how to like make film and oh. like all the liquid and stuff like yeah. the, the 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 red room i guess yeah like, yeah yeah the, yeah the red room we were we were learning how to do stuff in that <laughs> that's how we kind of like learned how to print t-shirts uh-huh. so we were she was teaching us that but it, yeah i mean that that style of photography is like it's not gone but eventually it's going to be gone cause yeah. that's so in a way now it's like old school yeah where you yeah. have to like uh, put your film down and like uh-huh. make sure like there's no like uh, spots or anything on your film strips yeah and uh, I remember like we remember those days where we had to get like those the the like those uh, oh, those little pants yeah, yeah. like the, uh, yeah. right and stuff you had like uh-huh. those instant cameras and stuff where yeah, you had to yeah. buy the film and then give it to them and <laughs> yep. they print it for you <laughs> yeah like damn I remember those days like, <laughs> now everything's like digital and you can just go to the store and plug in the USB yeah, and print your pictures yeah print it out like that it's it's crazy. Like and, and uh, this, that they have those instant Polaroids now too, where it's yes. like that it just comes out. Polaroids has always been around, but now it's mm-hmm. more like the, what they're selling now is super accessible, mm-hmm. where it's not like you don't have to go through any shop or anything. Where like you can have a nice quality Pol- Polaroid yeah. now. Mm-hmm. It's not like the the old school one with the shutter camera, you know, the big <laughs> yeah. black one, the box looking one. Um, oh, speaking of that, have, have you seen that film Shutter? Yes, I yeah. have seen that. Are you scared of doing that with photography? Yes, I, <laughs> I, I, am. I am scared. <laughs> Man, because like that Thai, did you watch the Thai one, right? Yeah, I've seen both versions, oh, and the Thai the, one it gave me nightmares for a week. And the, the Thai, I think about the the Thai film mm. is still one of the scariest yeah. ones. Yeah, like, because it's so general. Mm. It's just like taking pictures. That, that's what <laughs> yeah. it is. And the idea was yeah. the seed of the idea is just taking pictures, and then mm. you know Thai people are so good at like. They're so good with their horror yeah, films because yeah, they they, they don't just add the, the the horror aspect; they add the actual story to it. Yeah, you know, like with the American version, that one was complete trash. Like mm-hmm. yeah. they they threw in the Japanese content. Like like no, not yeah. not every Asian goes to Japanese. Right. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then it, it upset me more was when like uh, the way they they die is like their faces. Um, uh, oh, the they, camera would, like explode in their face. Yeah, so. that. But then like their faces become like when. Uh, have you seen the ring? Oh yeah, yeah. they get all like messed up yeah. and decayed. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. But but the uh, no the the Thai one man that was that was a very horrific horrifying <laughs> yeah. film. Yes, like, it was. And not just that, like the, the the actress for the ghost. Yeah. She not true. She's no, oh, she's scary oh, as hell. Yeah, she was scary. Yeah. The the car scene. That's mm-hmm. the one I hated the most. I hated the car scene because like you know she's you see her in the rear view mirror and then now she's on the driver's side window uh-huh. and then or the passenger side window and then he looks back <laughs> looks at the mirror the window the door and he, bam she's at the front yeah. like oh man what the hell oh and then, and then the you know the blanket scene where he's sleeping oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I remember that's why like I started tucking my blanket under my feet because of that because of that movie <laughs> because like how you know, she was grabbing the blanket at the end of the movie. I was like oh hell no I'm, just, I'm tucking my I'm tucking my feet I know like with, with uh, I don't know if digital cameras can capture this stuff but do you think do you, do you, are you like suspicious on that too like with taking photos and stuff do you think you can or do you believe that you can take photos capturing that kind of I guess spiritual or like other side i don't think not so much with digital but if it's like with film then i think it it probably could catch it it's probably like the, with the light and all that too right yeah because like when you take a, a digital photo it it doesn't go on film right but okay film like if you mess with it then there's a possibility yeah yeah you know? <laughs> yeah because like film you can't fake with film right with yeah. film strips uh-huh. digital art you can you know edit it and uh-huh. photoshop and all that stuff yeah. are, are you practicing with that too like with photoshop and all yeah. those like adobe editors and whatever right? yeah yes i am i am i i'm currently learning how to, to edit photos on uh, adobe photoshop okay mm-hmm. but i've been using adobe lightroom to edit my photos 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they're two different programs. Yeah, yep, two different programs. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, before we wrap up here, did you want to uh, add any plugs at all? I know you mentioned like your your stu your uh, your Facebook account and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. uh, let let the fans know like your Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, I'm I, I'm mostly active on my uh, my Facebook uh, page, uh, two studios T O U H X and then uh, just studios, um, and I also have an Instagram. We have any listeners from Michigan if they wanna if they are interested in your work, mm -hmm. um, let them know how they can reach you too, like, like your email and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, um, and then you guys could also contact me at uh, two four John at Yahoo dot com. Yeah, and I, um, I I'll have that on the description too, so that way you don't have to spell it out for oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah. any anyone who's listening, that's like whether it's through YouTube, SoundCloud, or Facebook, mm -hmm. all that info will be on the description. Uh, the links will be set there too. I'll I'll look for your um your Instagram too and put put that on there. Okay. But again, uh, for those who listen, he's mostly active on Facebook, so you can contact him through that too. I do want to shout out uh, LP and Bay Mong. Um, I thank you for letting me use your uh, instrumentals for uh, my podcast and each episode that I've used it on. Um, also, make sure you guys, uh, if you live in the northern side of Michigan, close to the UP, or if you are traveling there, make sure you guys check out Indochina Garden. They have nice quality um, food. They're, it's not the typical Chinese restaurant stuff. It's actually legit. Next week, my schedule is going to be a little bit different. Um, usually, I try to release episodes on Sundays. But next Sunday, I have DC Reacts uh, as a guest. So that episode will be uh, uploaded maybe like a day or two after um, instead of that Sunday. So uh, for those of you who don't know DC Reacts, he is a, um, a Hmong content creator who reacts to Hmong hip hop videos. He recently did one where he reacted to uh, a Hmong brand pepper um, sauce, stuff like that. Yeah, have you seen that? that? Yeah, yeah seen he, that. he reacted to that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that, that stuff that should look pretty good. I might have to buy some of that. Uh, I, I loved uh, the one that he tested was the fresh one. Uh, I forgot what, what what was the brand. I forgot what it was. I'll I'll post that up too. But he had like the three different brands or th the three different styles of the same brand pepper. The fresh one looked really good because I, I love the traditional monk peppers with like the cilantro and, and all that stuff. I'm not too into the whole like just peppers and fish stock. I'm, I'm not too big on that. <laughs> and then... um. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. You, again, you can uh, you can contact Tuho through his Facebook. Oh, and make sure you guys, if you guys have any questions or want to answer any of our statements that we said in the podcast, contact poplickpodcast at gmail dot com. And uh, make sure you guys follow uh, my stuff on SoundCloud, YouTube, Facebook, um, or Facebook's under Poplick Podcast. But everything else is Spoiler Force Podcast on SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, and YouTube. And also, Pop Dog Podcast is slowly coming back. We're on Anchor. We have uh, one or two episodes from before we uh, we disbanded. Make sure you guys follow and rate my podcast on Apple Podcasts, please, because if you rate it, then it's, it'll be an easier. You can find it more easily. Um, and that's pretty much it. So again, thank you Tua for for this. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your input on a lot of these topics, man. I told you it's very, <laughs> this was very. It's not as difficult as you thought it was. It was very la laid back. Uh, podcasting super easy for I, I I think anyone who has interest or if you have like if you have something to talk about podcasting is the way to go and um again I I have VC reacts next week I'm looking for one more guest I I'm in talks with a bunch of other guests too if uh if you're interested on being on Spoiler First podcast contact my our email on pop on public podcast at Gmail contact uh, make sure you, that you leave the subject line like guest or interested. Um, that way I can work things out with you too and uh, that's that's it yeah so uh, thank you guys for listening thank you again Tuha oh, and you guys have a, have a great night y'all If you enjoyed this episode follow my Instagram at rickyvang92 r-i-c-k-y v-a-n-g 92 and follow Pop Luck Podcast on Facebook.com slash Pop Luck Podcast.